This is undoubtedly the most successful zombie movie adapted from the Resident Evil game, and one of the few worth watching in recent years in the genre of zombie horror. It surpasses the classic Resident Evil hexalogy in many aspects. It's the new Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Release in late 2021, the story begins on a secluded road in Raccoon City. A truck driver accidentally hits a woman crossing the road while trying to impress Claire, who is sitting in the passenger seat. Watch out! Both of them quickly get out of the truck to check on the woman's condition, only to find that she has stopped breathing, just when the two didn't know what to do. Unbeknownst to them, the woman has already turned into a zombie and quietly slips away from behind. It is not until the driver's dog suddenly gets off the truck and starts licking the bloodstains on the ground where the woman fell that they realize the woman's body has disappeared. Claire has some suspicions, but the driver, who doesn't want to take responsibility, just wants to leave quickly, helpless. Claire reluctantly leaves the scene with the driver. Little do they know that a viral crisis is quietly unfolding in Raccoon City at that very moment. Shortly after they arrive at their destination, Claire has just left the truck when the dog, which had consumed the zombie blood, begins to mutate and viciously bites the driver. Enraged, the driver curses at the dog. Little did he know that something even more terrible was yet to come. Meanwhile, Claire has already arrived at her brother Chris's house. However, as she knocks on the door, she inadvertently notices that their neighbor is staring at her intently. After entering the house, Claire tells Chris about the strange things she encountered and shows him a video. In the video, a man claims that someone is poisoning the water supply in Raccoon City, and a catastrophe of the scale comparable to Chernobyl is about to unfold. But Chris didn't think so when he saw it thinking the man was creating a conspiracy theory. Just as the words faded away, the sound of an alarm blared outside. It was an urgent message from the pharmaceutical company Umbrella Corporation. Your safety, please stay in your home and await further instructions. It was clear that something had gone wrong with Umbrella Corporation. To find out what had happened, Chris, being a police officer, immediately headed to the police station. Meanwhile, Claire, who stayed alone at home, noticed that the neighbor had appeared at her doorstep seemingly turned into a zombie judging by her unusual behavior, true to her suspicions. The next moment the zombie broke through the door and attacked Claire. She pushed the zombie away with all her strength and found her brother's motorcycle. She revved the engine and headed towards the police station. By that time, Chris had already arrived at the police station, but Brian, the police chief, had no idea what was happening. Two officers went to investigate a body at Umbrella Spencer Castle just before dark and have not been able to contact them, so Brian ordered them to fly a helicopter and search for them. However, before they set off, one of the police officers, Albert, received a message stating that Raccoon City would be completely destroyed at 6 a.m. the next morning and was given an escape route. It appeared that Albert had a close connection with Umbrella Corporation, and the virus outbreak had reached an uncontrollable stage. After the team left to execute the mission, only one officer, Leon, remained at the police station. He had earphones on, listening to music, unaware that danger was slowly closing in. The mutated truck driver, driving a truck, was speeding towards the police station. The truck swerved and crashed into a car by the roadside, flipping over right at the entrance of the police station. The next moment, a fierce explosion occurred. However, despite the tremendous explosion, Leon, who was sleeping with his earphones on, remained undisturbed. This lack of respect angered the zombies, walking towards Leon like the evil knight. It was only when Brian arrived and shot the zombie down that Leon woke up, startled. Under Brian's instructions, Leon extinguished the fire on the zombie's body and proceeded to close the main gate. When Leon finally found Brian and asked him what they should do, he discovered Brian packing his things, preparing to flee. It was clear that Brian had already sensed something. Confused, Leon chased Brian to the underground car park and asked him what was going on. However, Brian ignored him and declared that Leon was now the chief. With those words, Brian hastily accelerated and fled, leaving Leon dumbfounded. But Brian's escape didn't go as planned. As he reached the exit, he found that the Umbrella Corporation had sealed off the entire Raccoon City. No one was allowed to leave, and anyone attempting to do so would be shot without hesitation by Umbrella Corporation personnel. Witnessing this scene, Brian had no choice but to turn back. Meanwhile, Leon, who remained alone at the police station, began to sense that something was amiss with the people standing at the main gate. Just as Brian returned to the police station, 
He sensed danger and hurriedly went back to his vehicle to retrieve his gun. In that moment, the zombified dog suddenly attacked him but vanished the next second. Startled, Brian fired his gun aimlessly, exhausting all the bullets, yet there was no sign of the zombie dog. Brian crouched down to inspect under the car but was unaware that the zombie dog had silently crept up behind him. By the time he realized it, it was too late to escape. Fortunately, Claire arrived just in time to rescue Brian, and Leon rushed to the scene upon hearing the commotion. They regrouped in the main hall and noticed a gathering of zombies outside. It was only a matter of time before the zombies broke through the front door. Their only option now was to find Chris and escape Raccoon City by helicopter. Meanwhile, Chris and his team, flying a helicopter, finally spotted the overturned police car in the woods near the old castle. However, they didn't find the two officers inside. They noticed blood on the ground, which led them to the entrance of the old castle. They entered the mansion and began searching separately. Little did they know this is the source of the virus outbreak. Chris and the officers found a teammate on the first floor, but he had been bitten to death by the mutated researcher. Witnessing the horrifying transformation, they realized the gravity of the situation. They shot the researcher as he lunged at them. The officer continued upstairs in search of another teammate. Finally, on the third floor, the officer found the teammate's handgun but failed to notice the zombie lurking behind him. He was overwhelmed by the horde of zombies, while Chris downstairs faced a similar fate, desperately fighting back. Even the pilot waiting in the helicopter did not escape the zombie attack. Meanwhile, Albert and Jill reached the study. Following the retreat route received Albert opens a secret passage. However, Jill noticed an out-of-control helicopter heading straight for the old castle. Police Station Brian attempted to contact the helicopter using the radio but was unaware that it had crashed. In order to escape the police station, Leon and Claire went to the armory to equip themselves with weapons. Suddenly, they heard a distress call coming from the basement. Leon went down alone to investigate and discovered a man locked in a cell. It turned out to be Ben, the man in the video Claire had watched, revealing information about the incident. Ben pleaded with Leon to release him, claiming to know the truth behind the events. Curious. Leon approached him, but Ben seized his collar and stole his backup gun. Pointing the gun at Leon, Ben threatened him to open the cell. Leon had no choice but to comply. To their surprise, as soon as the cell door opened, the inmate inside turned into a zombie and attacked Ben. Then the zombie came out of the cell and lunged at Leon. In a critical moment, Claire arrived and shot the zombie, saving Leon. But Ben in the cell is dead. Outside the police station, a horde of zombies was about to break in. While unsure if Chris and the others were in danger, the three of them had no choice but to rendezvous with them. Fortunately, Brian knew a route that would take them directly to Spencer's castle. Time was of the essence, so the three of them set off immediately. However, at the same time, a large group of zombies broke through the main gate and surged inside. Claire in the back, fighting and retreating, finally leave through the back door before the zombies arrive. Guided by Brian, they entered the nearby orphanage. The secret passage to Spencer's castle is there. However, Claire, who had grown up in the orphanage, instantly recalled the horrors she had experienced there. Meanwhile, Leon, who was walking ahead, spotted a creepy girl. The girl seemed to have no ill intentions and gestured for them to remain silent. Then she pointed to the ceiling. Just when the two were wondering, Brian was suddenly dragged away by something behind him. A corpse by the time it fell. When they looked up, they were faced with a terrifying monster, filled with fear. They turned and ran, with the monster relentlessly pursuing them. Unfortunately, Leon stumbled and fell. As the monster lunged towards him, Claire quickly fired her gun, but her shots had no effect on the creature. In their moment of peril, the girl from earlier intervened just in time. After a few rounds, she effortlessly killed the monster barehanded. Claire also finally recognized the girl. She was Claire's childhood best friend. What kind of experiences had turned her into this? The girl seemed to recognize Claire as well. On learning that they were going to Spencer's castle, the girl handed Claire the key to the secret passage and led them to the entrance of the underground elevator. However, she chose to stay behind. The two of them then ascended the lift to the entrance of the secret passage, only to discover a hidden laboratory. It turns out that William of the Umbrella Corporation has been using children from orphanages for human experimentation. Apparently, the girl had also undergone some kind of bioengineering modification. Meanwhile, Albert and Jill, who had been affected by the explosion of the helicopter in the old castle, finally regained consciousness. 
With everything that had happened, Albert had no choice but to reveal to Jill that he was an undercover agent planted by the Umbrella Corporation in the police station, the entire Raccoon City was about to be destroyed, and the only way out was through the secret passage, however, Jill didn't want to leave her teammate behind, while they were having a conversation, a zombie suddenly emerged, fortunately, Albert quickly reacted and killed the zombie, although he didn't know the specifics of Umbrella Corporation's research, Albert was willing to do anything for money, disregarding Jill's objections, he ran into the secret passage alone, determined to carry out the mission assigned by the Umbrella Corporation, Jill made the decision to find Chris, Chris is braving the darkness to fight off the zombies on his own, Chris managed to eliminate wave after wave of attacking zombies until his ammunition ran out, he had no choice but to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the remaining zombies, just as he was on the brink of peril, Jill arrived just in time to save him, after dealing with the remaining zombies, Jill informed Chris about Albert's situation and revealed that the helicopter had crashed. The only escape route is the secret passage Albert left, and Albert is following the secret passage to the laboratory. Following the instructions, Albert intended to seize Dr. William's research findings, unaware that William was preparing to escape with the G-Virus. Fortunately, Albert arrived at the laboratory in time. As soon as William saw him, he knew Albert was after the G-Virus. William claimed that he wouldn't hand over his research findings to anyone, but Albert didn't waste time arguing, raising a pistol directly to William and threatening him to hand over the G-Virus. William pretended to cooperate on the surface but was secretly preparing to counterattack. Albert managed to avoid a fatal blow, while William ended up being knocked down. William quickly instructed his wife to retrieve the G-Virus, but as she prepared to inject it into her husband, Albert pointed his gun at her. The woman tragically died protecting her husband at the point of Albert's gun. Upon approaching William's body, Albert discovered that William had already injected himself with the G-Virus. In order to prevent his mutation, Albert quickly finished him off. However, just as he was preparing to leave, William's daughter raised her gun. Jill and Chris had arrived just in time to witness the scene. In the heat of the moment Jill shot Albert, in his last breath, Albert assured Jill that he wouldn't harm the child and revealed the escape route before ceasing to breathe. The three of them hurried towards the escape location. Meanwhile, Claire and her companion also arrived nearby. Unbeknownst to them, William, who had been injected with the G-Virus, not only survived but underwent a terrifying mutation, transforming into a monstrous creature. While Chris and the group were fleeing, they suddenly heard the howl of the mutated William. To protect the other's escape, Chris decided to stay behind and lure the creature. Soon enough, William, who had turned into a monster, caught up with Chris. Chris was no match for the creature and was soon grabbed by the throat. Fortunately, Claire arrived just in time. A few shots and she managed to bring down William. With time running out, the three of them quickly reunited with Jill and Chris. The group of five finally boarded the subway to escape Raccoon City. Once the subway started, they could finally breathe a sigh of relief. However, unbeknownst to them, William on the ground had begun to evolve once again. To make matters worse, Jill, looking at the communication device Albert had given her, discovered that the Umbrella Corporation had initiated a self-destruct sequence. With the collapse of the old castle, the subway was also affected and came to a halt. They haven't reacted yet. They heard massive footsteps from the top of the train compartment. Suddenly, a huge claw tore right through the roof of the car. The group focused their gaze and saw the fully evolved William, emanating a powerful aura that left them stunned. Reacting quickly, Chris kept firing his gun, but the bullets had no effect on the monster. As they ran out of ammunition, Leon appeared, wielding a rocket launcher. Oh shit! monster was obliterated into pieces by the explosion, in the midst of a massive blast. Raccoon City was completely engulfed in destruction. The Umbrella Corporation believed they had the virus under control, unaware that the group of five had successfully escaped through the tunnels. 